viewers and random Doctor Who fans, I come before you today to review this, which is the new Spin and Fly TARDIS. So first up, here we have the box, which is coloured blue and contains the silver Doctor Who logo, and its insignia at the bottom, along with Spin and Fly TARDIS written underneath it. It's designed for the 3.75 inch scale figures, hooray, and it has spinning flight action when it's in its flight cradle. There is a takeoff and landing light, and there are also some sound effects, and there are also spring-loaded doors. And here we also have the warping, warpish noise the TARDIS makes during flight. The police box is displayed well within the packaging via a nice big plastic window which extends all the way to the top, and behind the toy you can just about make out a swirling blue vortex. Technically, it should be purple now, but eh, whatever. On the sides, we have the same information alongside a look at the new TARDIS interior card. And on the back, we have a list of all its features. Just look at them all. I would read each one out, but we'd be here all day. And I wouldn't have any time to be... sarcastic. For example, check this out. Under the spinning and flying option, they've actually written Does not actually fly, does not spin unaided, all images are for illustration purposes only. Nah, really? They even have Spin and Fly TARDIS Does Not Actually Fly written on the instructions, for God's sake. What kind of morons do they think we are? On the bottom, there's just some useless legal garb. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, that's the packaging. Let's open it up and get this over with. Oh, dear. So, as you can see, this thing is incredibly small in order to fit in with the new scaled-down action figures. Taking a look at the detail, the lantern at the top still looks pretty decent with the rings visible around the top and bottom of that glass section there. The police public call box signage doesn't look too good. It seems like the letters have been squashed down to fit onto the sign and as a result seem very chunky and not screen accurate. The windows do look good, character have gone for the black glass effect again and two of the bottom panes have some pattern detailing on each window. There are some silver handles present on the doors alongside a silver keyhole and the St. John's Ambulance badge is nicely detailed. The pull-to-open phone box door looks alright and includes all of the text seen on the actual prop, but the sticker is a little bit wonky. The wood grain detailing from the flight control TARDIS makes a return, and the toy is all the better for it. I love that attention to detail, even if it is only just made up of a few squiggly scores etched into the plastic. The sides, just like the front, look well, but the back is a train wreck. I mean, look at this! If you've seen some of my other reviews, you'll know just how much I hate speaker holes and battery compartments, and this is no exception. The speaker holes are big and take up an entire panel, but the battery compartment is by far the worst. Perhaps it's the smaller scale which makes it really noticeable, but they haven't even tried to conceal this panel. And the best part? It still takes three AAA batteries. Yeah, this thing takes the same amount of batteries as the bigger flight control TARDIS. And if you think some batteries are included, you've got another thing coming. On the base we have the white circular spin and fly clip, an on off button, and the button which activates the flight sound effects. Oh, and of course, what toy wouldn't be complete without some legal garb. Opening the two spring-loaded doors, you'll notice the diorama of the new interior, which does look good. It's a nice image which shows off the console well with some great detail on it. You can even see some steps in the background and the two monitors on either side of the time rotor. The ceiling is just a standard blue, but the floor is coloured grey and nicely matches in with the grey floor of the actual interior image. But you can also notice something else. There are no interior sound effects. Remember with the flight control TARDIS when you opened the TARDIS doors you heard the sounds of the console? Well, not anymore, which is hugely disappointing. Plus there are no light effects either. Closing the doors is another issue, as again another feature from the flight control TARDIS has been dropped. Remember the little button on the floor which shuts the right hand door? It's gone! So now closing the doors is very tricky, and you can quite easily get your fingers trapped between the doors. And Oh, please tell me the phone box door opens. You know, that feature they made such a big deal about on the 10th Doctor's Flight Control TARDIS packaging? No! <laughs> oh God, why? <clears throat> anyway, taking a look at the rest of its features, just like the flight control version, this TARDIS also has some materialization and dematerialization sequences. When landed, the lantern at the top lights up a steady white. 
Lifting the toy activates its dematerialization noise and the lantern will start blinking on and off. Due to the lack of sound effects on the doors, this means there is no way to cut the materialization noises short, meaning you have to listen to the whole thing each time. When the sound effect has stopped, the lantern will continue to pulsate on and off again for a few minutes. The toy no longer contains a spindle on the base to allow you to fly it, as that of course would just be too easy. No, instead we have that spin and fly clip which rotates through 360 degrees. A clear plastic cradle does come with the toy which attaches to the base, allowing you to spin it. But this is much more awkward than the simplicity of the flight control TARDIS's spindle. It's difficult to hold, plus the TARDIS wobbles around and can easily spin out of control and off balance, meaning it doesn't rotate smoothly. And to top it all off, again there is no sound effects when the police box is spun. But are you really surprised at this point? I'll bet you're not even surprised by the fact that the toy also emits no turbulent flight sound effects when it's shaken. Unclipping the base and setting it down onto a flat surface will activate its materialization sound effect. And when that's completed, the pulsating lamp at the top will return to being constantly illuminated for about 3 minutes before it shuts down to conserve power. Doing a size comparison, here you can see the Spin and Fly TARDIS next to its two bigger brothers, the 10th and 11th flight control toys. And they practically dwarf this new version. In fact, the Spin and Fly toy almost fits inside the older toys. This is a good chance to compare the detail of the older TARDISes to the new model. And for the most part, yeah, it, it holds up well. But you can really see the difference of the police box signage between the older and the newer model. And I know I complained about the back of the flight control TARDIS, but it looks like a work of art compared to this messy new version. Taking a look at the toy compared to some 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, you can see that the TARDIS does fit in well with the scale. For example, it doesn't look too out of place when compared to this Cyberman. I mean, Iron Man. Damn it! So... <laughs> Overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, it is absolutely the most perfect example of characters continuing steep decline in the quality of their merchandise. Nobody asked for the Doctor Who line to be scaled back to the 3 and 3 quarter inch range, and yet here we are, with less quality and far less features. In fact, let's take a look at this. Here is the packaging for the 10th Doctor's Flight Control TARDIS, the 11th Doctor's Flight Control TARDIS, and this new spin and fly version. Notice a pattern? There are less and less features on the back of the boxes with each new release. Look, on the 10th there are so many features to show off, on the 11th there are a little less, and on this one there are only three. I get the feeling that the next TARDIS toy released will be a block of wood painted blue. But as always, I've tried to find some positives in here, and I guess the exterior detail for the most part looks good. My only major issues are the police box signage and the back battery compartment. The interior looks great. The diorama image of the new interior is well detailed and brightly coloured and, of course, from the right angle. But again, a lenticular image to make it look 3D or some LEDs behind the console would have added to the bigger on the inside illusion. And I guess it's cute. I can see it adorning people's work desks as it takes up less space than the flight control TARDIS. However, it's not just one massive step backward for character. It's several steps backward. There are less sound effects. The interior, windows and police box sign don't light up. It's harder to close the doors. You can pull that pull to open door all you want, but it just doesn't budge. And overall, that new spin and fly cradle idea is just stupid. I had an idea that maybe you could set the TARDIS onto a flat surface on its base and spin it, but due to it being off balance, it doesn't stay in one spot. Perhaps some rubber stoppers could have been added to each corner of the base to hold it in position or something, but no. Maybe the spin and fly clip itself should have been motorised, so when it's up on display it would spin by itself when on its base, but again, no. At the end of the day, it's just a very little blue box filled with disappointment. And considering it's bigger on the inside, that's a lot of disappointment. Again, I have no idea why character made the switch to the smaller figure range with less detail and less features for around the same price as their older merchandise, but when they have to write that the TARDIS doesn't actually fly on the instructions, it's pretty clear exactly what they think of their customers. And so that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are countless more reviews online. Thank you again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd.
Goodbye.